It's funny to believe that over 25 years ago, we were getting our first taste of Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue. Over the years, this franchise exploded and became a worldwide phenomenon, including brand new games that featured a brand new story, areas, and of course, Pokemon. This also included game mechanics such as Mega Evolutions, Z-Moves, Dynamax forms, and with the introduction of Generation 9 Scarlet and Violet, Terrastalizing. This is the first episode of three in a mini series that I am bringing to the channel, and I'm going to do my best to explain the best Pokemon to Terrastalize. So let's dive straight in. How's it going everyone? I am Draconic and I hope you're all fired up and ready to go for this video. When we started making this video series, it started through a tier list. Myself and my good buddy Cheese Fisher ranked every single Pokemon. That nearly destroyed us. But despite all the bad things that came out of that tier list, we were able to get a lot of valuable information and find some of the best and even broken Pokemon to terrestrialize. So in today's first episode, we're going to talk about some fan favorite Pokemon that would be the best to terrestrialize. Let's dive straight in. The first Pokemon we're going to talk about is none other than the mascot itself, Pikachu. This is more of an introduction as to how I'm going to be managing this series. Pikachu is an electric type and while the stats are not that impressive, the speed stat is definitely something pretty good. It also has the ability Lightning Rod. Lightning Rod redirects any electric attack to Pikachu and increases the special attack stat. Pikachu also has some very good moves including Volt Tackle, Fake Out, Thunderbolt and Nuzzle. And it can even swap out with Volt Switch. As many of you know, Pikachu only has one weakness and that is the ground type. By terrestrializing Pikachu into a flying type, you're getting rid of that ground immunity. Plus, the lightning rod allows you to redirect any electric attack to Pikachu to increase its stats rather than weaken it. However, by terrestrializing into flying, you are getting some more weaknesses in rock and ice. This is still not a terrible terror type, but we can do it better. Introducing Pikachu Surfing with Water type. It is really good against the ground type, Lightning Rod still redirects the attack to Pikachu, and it only has one weakness, and that is Grass. But in all fairness, if you really do want to make Pikachu good, you'll evolve it into a Raichu, and then it will be surfing all the way up to top tier. Potentially. Alright, I think it's time we start moving on to some powerhouses, and what better to start with Tyranitar. This pseudo-legendary Rock and Dark type is an absolute unit, boasting high attack and very good defensive stats. Despite a very low speed stat, it has a good variety of moves in Rock Slide, Earthquake, Crunch and Stone Edge. It can also play support with Thunder Wave and Stealth Rock, or start sweeping with Dragon Dance. But despite all of the good things that Tyranitar has going good for it, it's seven weaknesses, Grass, Ground, Bug, Steel, Water and Fairy, and most importantly, Fighting being its biggest weakness. If you were to terrestrialize Tyranitar into a Ghost type, you're getting rid of that terrible Fighting weakness, a nice normal immunity on top of that, and is potential you can do some really good mind games with Tyranitar. You're trading seven weaknesses for just Ghost and Dark? Yeah, this is definitely a very good thing for Tyranitar. And speaking of Pokemon that would be good for sweeping, introducing Gyarados, a water and flying type with a terrible weakness with Electric. Gyarados has a really high attack stat with a decently good speed stat. The abilities Intimidate weaken your opponent and Moxie make Gyarados even stronger after it gets a KO. There are some popular moves with Waterfall, Bounce, Earthquake and Crunch. And it is also able to set up once again with Dragon Dance. 
By terrestrializing Gyarados into a ground type, you are getting rid of that terrible electric weakness, and you also have access to Stab Earthquake after a Dragon Dance setup. You do give Gyarados some more weaknesses in Grass, Ice and Water, and Grass does tend to be a bit more predictable, but when you're setting up a Dragon Dance and sweeping with Earthquake, the weaknesses are nothing to worry about. Moving on to a Generation 4 fan favourite, we have Lucario. Fighting and Steel is a very good type for Lucario. It does not care about its defences, but more on its offensive stats. Inner Focus will prevent it from getting flinched or weaken its attack, and Justified will increase its stats further when hit by a Dark type move. It also has a wide variety of moves, some very powerful ones including Close Combat, Aura Sphere, Meteor Mesh and Flash Cannon. These can all be powered up with Nasty Plot and Sword Stance. It only has 3 weaknesses with Ground, Fighting and Fire, and we can get rid of all those weaknesses by terrestrializing into a Dragon type. This is a very interesting type change for Lucario, as with its Steel type moves you are able to hit Fairy and Ice as the new weaknesses. It can set itself up very nicely and is able to cover its brand new weaknesses. This is definitely one that you need to be very careful of. In Generation 9, I do hope bug types get some love and support, and who else but Scizor to get that support. This bug and steel type has a very high attack stat, despite not having a very good speed stat. It is able to use the ability Technician that powers up some of its weaker moves, including Priority Bullet Punch. Many of you may know Scizor for its one and only weakness being Fire. And when looking for a good Terra type for Scizor, couldn't really find a good one. So we decided to go back to its Scyther roots in Flying, where it is able to get Dual Wing Beat and Hit for Stab. It does get three more weaknesses, so finding the right time to Terrestrialize Scizor is very important. It does get a little bit of setup with Sword Stance, or potentially a Choice Band item, but set up right, Terrestrialize at the right time, this is one Pokemon you should be very careful of. Moving on to a Generation 3 favourite, we have Gardevoir, a Psychic and Fairy type. While the physical stats are not very good, it is the special stats that you should be very careful of. Gardevoir's popular moves include Sidekick, Expanding Force, Moonblast and Dazzling Gleam. It also has a weakness to Steel, which you are able to deal with by turning Gardevoir into a Fire type. By terrestrializing Gardevoir into a Fire type, you are able to deal with its Steel weakness. It's a nice fire type stab that offers a decrease of your opponent's special attack stat. While Gardevoir can't exactly deal with its brand new weaknesses, it does have a lot of options for terrestrializing. It has a large move pool with access to other moves such as Shadow Ball and Thunder Ball and so on and so forth that choosing the right type for Gardevoir is definitely very important. We do believe fire is the best way to go because you can still hit other weaknesses such as poison with a psychic move and fire is still going to be good against steel types. This next one we have is Dragonite, a dragon and flying pseudo legendary with high attack and decently good speed. It is also able to keep itself safe with the multi scale ability that reduces any damage it takes. Dragonite also has a wide variety of attacks including Dragon Claw, Dual Wing Beat, Earthquake, Extreme Speed, Iron Head and Ice Punch. It can keep itself nice and healthy with Roost and offer a speed and attack increase with Dragon Dance. Dragonite has 4 weaknesses in Dragon, Ice, Rock and Fairy and you can get rid of all of that by terrestrializing Dragonite into a Steel type. After setting up a Dragon Dance you can use Iron Head to deal damage to Ice, Rock and Fairy while also using Dragon Moves before to hit the already existing weakness of Dragon. It does get three brand new weaknesses and Dragonite's move pool might not be equipped to handle it. If you see a Dragonite hit the field, assume it's going to terrestrialize into a Steel type. It is Dragonite's best Terra type and one you need to be very careful about. And lastly, we are going to wrap up the list with my favorite Pokemon of all time, Charizard. This fire breathing, fire flying type has really good speed paired with a very high special attack stat. 
The special attack stat only gets stronger with solar power, an ability that increases the special attack when the sun is on the field. Its popular moves include Flamethrower, Heat Wave, Air Slash, Dragon Pulse, Ancient Power, Solar Power, Hurricane, and if it wants to keep itself safe, Protect. It only has three weaknesses, Water, Electric, and most importantly, Rock, which is Charizard's greatest weakness. By terrestrializing Charizard into a Fire type, you are able to absolutely maximize the amount of damage you can do. With powerful fire attacks, the sun on the field, powered by solar power, this is one terror type you need to be very careful of. Solar Beam is also able to counter all of the weaknesses that Charizard has. However, it does rely on having the sun on the field to counter these weaknesses. If you terrestrialize Charizard into a grass type, that solar beam only gets stronger for dealing with its weaknesses. However, this grass type has one huge weakness, and that is rain. If rain hits the field, you immediately want to swap out the Charizard, especially since you're granting it five new weaknesses in poison, ice, flying, bug, and very ironically, fire. But despite the two types that I have shown you, fire and grass, they are not even Charizard's strongest Terra type. If you terrestrialize Charizard into a Dragon type, you need to be aware of how powerful Charizard is going to get. It resists all previous weaknesses, gets rid of that terrible four times weakness to Rock, and is able to make Dragon Pulse very strong in Stab and Solar Power while the Sun is on the field. It is also able to counter Ice types with its already existing Fire type move, and trying to think of any disadvantages for Charizard were very, very minor. And that rounds out the list for this video, and I really do hope that you all enjoyed watching and took a little bit of information that you are going to take into Generation 9 Scarlet and Violet. For the second episode that we have in this mini-series, I think it might be a good idea to go ahead and ask all of you, if you have any Pokemon that you want me to cover in the second episode, please let me know down in the comments and I will do my best to pick the best ones for the episode this Sunday. Until then, take care of yourselves, enjoy the rest of your day, keep that fire burning, and I will see you all in the next video.